Hi guys, this is uh, Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Uh, and this uh, short video, uh, part of the series on uh, Boolean expressions, uh, is going to, uh, I suppose, walk through how to take a Boolean expression and to represent that Boolean expression through a true table. Uh, this is the second video on how to represent a Boolean expression through a true table. So this is just another example, uh, just so to make sure or to try to, I suppose, uh, reaffirm uh, what we've done previously. Okay, so the Boolean expression that we're going to concentrate on is a bo this particular Boolean expression that I've listed here. Uh, there's three main terms in here, separated by the ORs, or the pluses. Okay? Uh, so we have the first term here, the second term, and the third term. And what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to build, uh, I suppose, systematically, a, a true table that represents this particular this particular overall expression. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to we're just going to parse or walk from left to right, and we're going to count how many inputs there is, or what are the what are the unique inputs. Uh, so this expression has a's, has b's, has c's, uh, has no other letters. So the inputs are a, b, and c. So let's write them here: a, b, c. And what we're going to do here in the true table is on the left hand side of this double bar. Uh, we're going to list down all the possible, I suppose, states that these three inputs could be in simultaneously. Uh, just a quick way to do this is that the, the input closest to the bar is going to alternate off, on, off, on, off, on, off, on, so on and so forth. So we're going to have 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. Uh, the second input is going to double the sequence that we had previously, so it's going to have two zeros followed by two ones, two zeros, followed by two ones. And the third input is going to double the previous one, so we're going to have four zeros, uh, followed by four ones. Okay. So now that we've defined the inputs, uh, what we'll do is we'll process the expression from left to right, term by term, and then bring all the terms together so that we have the overall output for the, for the whole expression. So, uh, just looking at this particular expression here, okay, uh, we can see that we have an A ORed with a negated B. Once we've done that, that needs to be negated and then ANDed with a negated A, which needs to be ORed with a C. So what we really have here is we have two subterms, uh, I suppose separated by this AND in the center. Uh, so what we do is we do the left-hand side first of all. The left-hand side requires that we take an A and that we OR it with a neg negated B. But before I can do the OR, I must negate the B. So I'm going to create a column called B bar to represent the negated B. The negation of the B is simply if the B is off, the negated B will be on. So zeros go to ones. Okay, that zero goes to one. Zero goes to one. One goes to zero. One goes to zero. Zero goes to one. Zero goes to one. 1 goes to 0, 1 goes to 0. Okay, so that gives us our negated, our negated B. Okay, so that's our negated B column. So now what we can do is we can take our negated B column and we can order it with the A column to give us A ORed with B bar. Okay, so A ORed with B bar is simply the A values ORed with the negated B values. So the two columns that we're going to look at are these two columns here of values. Okay. Uh, and we know the way an OR works, an OR only ever gives us zero when both of the inputs are simultaneously zero. So they're not simultaneously zero here, so we get a one. They're not simultaneously zero here, so we get a one. They are simultaneously zero here, so we get a zero. Similarly here, they're simultaneously zero, so we get a zero. They're not simultaneously zero here, so we get a one. We get a one. We get a one. And, sim and finally, they're not simultaneously zero, so we get a one. We get a one here to give us the a ORed with the negated b. Okay. Now before we can do the and, okay, with this and here, we need to negate the a ORed with negated b. So we need to take our a ORed with our negated b, and we need to negate it, which means that ones go to zeros, zeros go to ones, ones go to zeros, ones go to zeros. And that gives us the left hand operand for this and here. Okay. So we're nearly there for the first expression. 
what we need to do is we need to do the right hand operand now for this and. Uh, the bracket says that we need to negate the a, then we or it with the c. So before we can do the or, we must have the negated a values. So let's negate our a's. So a bars. A bars are the a column values negated. So 0 goes to 1, 0 goes to 1, 0 goes to 1, 0 goes to 1. 1 goes to 0, 1 goes to 0, 1 goes to 0, and 1 goes to 0 to give us our negated a column. Okay. Now what we can do is we can take our negated a values and we can order them with the c column. So we're going to be ordering these two values together as we go down. Now what's important here is a bar ordered with c. Uh, the or only ever gives us 0 when both of the inputs are simultaneously 0. Well, they're not simultaneously 0 here, so we get a 1. Neither here, so we get a 1. They're not simultaneously 0 here, so we get a 1. Neither here, so we get a 1. They are simultaneously 0 here, so we get a 0. They're not here, so we get a 1. They are here, so we get a 0. They're not here, so we get a 1. To give us our A bar or with C values. Okay. So now we have the two operands. We have our A or with B bar bar listed down this column. And we have our A bar or with C listed down this column. Now we can add both of these columns together to give us the A or with B bar bar ended with our A bar or with C column. Okay. So our two columns are here. Once again, an AND gives us a 1 when both of them are simultaneously 1. And they're not simultaneously 1 here or here. They are here. They are there. So we have a 0, 0. Two simultaneous 1s gives us a 1. Two simultaneous 1s gives us a 1. They're not here, so we get a 0. Neither here, so we get a 0. Neither here, so we get a 0. Neither here, so we get a 0. So what we've done here in this column is we've done the first expression, yeah, in this overall, in this overall uh, expression. Okay. So, looking at the second expression, we have an AND that has a left operand, which is a C bar, and it has a right operand, which is an A or with B bar. So to do this AND, we need to have a C bar column, which we don't have. So we need to create a C bar column, which is simply our C values. Negate it. So 0 goes to 1, 1 goes to 0, 0 goes to 1, 1 goes to 0, 0 goes to 1, 0, 0 goes to 1, 0. Okay, to give us our C bar values. So that's our C bar column listed down here. Now, what we also need is we need an A or with B bar. But before we can do the bar or the negation, we need to have our A or with B values. We don't have a column that is A ordered with B, so we need to construct one, which is A ordered with B, which is simply an ordering of the A and B columns. Once again, an order only ever gives us zero, and both of them are simultaneously zero. So we have a zero here. We have a zero here. We don't have simultaneous zeros there, neither there. So we have a one and a one. We don't have simultaneous zeros there or there. So we have a one and a one. And we don't have simultaneous, simultaneous zeros here or here, so we have a 1 and a 1, which gives us our A ordered with B. So now that we have our A ordered with B values, we can now negate those values, yeah, to give us our A ordered with B bar values. Okay, so the negation of the A ordered with B column becomes 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. That's our A ordered with B bar values. Now that we have our C bar column and we have our A or with B bar column, we can and both of these columns together to give us our C bar to be anded with our A or with B bar column, okay, which will be our third expression. So what we're anding together are these values here. Once again, an AND gives us 1 when both of them are simultaneously 1, otherwise it gives us a 0. And you can see we've got two 1s here, so that gives us a 1. We don't have two ones here, so we get a zero. Neither here, and actually, we'll never have two ones for the rest of them. Okay, so we have a zero, a zero, a zero, a zero, a zero, and a zero. Okay, so that's our second expression completed. Now, our third expression requires an ending 
of a left operand and a right operand. And to add this together we need an A bar, which we've already got. We also need to or together a B bar with a C bar. So we need a B bar column, which we have. And we also need a C bar column, which we have. So we can actually produce the B bar or with C bar column. Okay. So our B bar or our C bar is the B bar column or with the C bar column. Once again, an OR only ever gives us zero and both of them are simultaneously zero. And you can see we don't have simultaneous zeros here, neither here, neither there. We do here in the fourth case, so we'd have a zero here. Everywhere else we have a one, okay? Continuing on, we don't have simultaneous zeros there, neither there, neither there, but we do in the fourth case, so we have a zero here everywhere else we'll have a one. So that's our B bar order our C bar. Okay, so now what we can construct is we can construct our A bar anded, our A bar anded with our B bar order with C bar column. Okay, now our A bar we've already calculated is here. Okay, our B bar order with C bar column is here. So we're gonna and these two things together. Once again, an and only ever gives us one when both of them are simultaneously one, otherwise we get a zero. So our values are one, one, gives us a one. One, one, gives us a one. One, one, gives us a one. One, zero, well they're not simultaneously one, so we get a zero. They're not simultaneously one here, so we get a zero. Neither here we get a zero, neither here we get a zero, and neither here we get a zero, so we end up with zeros uh, for the rest of the expression. Okay. So now what we've done is we've constructed our three terms. The first term is here, the second term is here, and the third term is here. And what we need to do with these three terms, these three terms here, here, and here, is we need to pass them in through an OR. Now, once again, and OR only ever gives us zero when they're all zero. So we're looking for across these three rows to have simultaneous zeros across them. If they're not simultaneous zeros, we don't get a zero, otherwise we get a one. And you can see that we don't have simultaneous zeros here or here, okay? So what we end up with is we end up with a one. We don't have simultaneous zeros here, so we end up with a one. We don't either here, so we end up with a one. Uh, we don't on the fourth line, okay? There, there, and there. So we end up with a one. Now the next line, we do have simultaneous zeros, so we get a zero. The next line, we do have simultaneous zeros, so we get a zero. The next line, we don't have, sorry, we do have simultaneous zeros, so we get a zero. And the next line, we don't have simultaneous, we do have simultaneous zeros in all three cases, so we get a zero. And this is the output of ordering each one of these sub-expressions or terms together. Let's call this function f. So this function is the function f. So this output here is the output of the f function. And what it's saying to us is this, is that when the inputs are 0, 0, and 0 for a, b, and c, we get an output of 1. When a is 0 and b is 0 and c is 1, we get an output of 1. And similarly, for these inputs, we get them outputs. Now what's saying here is that when A is one and B is zero, and C is one, our output is zero. So what we can see that true table does for us is that a true table maps all possible inputs and produces all the outputs under all of these conditions, yeah? So what we can actually see from the output is we can see the full workings, yeah, of the Boolean expression. Okay, guys. Uh, I know that was a little bit complicated uh, in the sense that we had a lot of operations to perform and we had to do them. And hopefully what you could see from this particular example is that I parse from left to right, building consecutively as I go along to arrive at the final functions output. So once again, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. And I hope that video was somewhat helpful. Thank you.